Hi, and welcome to the next part in our series of Unity GUI tutorials. Basically, we're creating graphical user interfaces in Unity with a variety of different techniques. So last time we covered the built-in 2D stuff that Unity has. Um, it's pretty simple to use, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Uh, today we're going to look a little bit at stuff that you can do in 3D. So we're actually going to kind of steal an idea from this YouTube user called BD2 who made this kind of neat little 3D menu. We're going to do something kind of like this. So we're going to head over to Unity and we're going to make a new project. I just called it 3D Menu. And we're going to start building our little 3D menu here. So we're going to start with a cube. Every good project starts with a cube. Um, and so basically we're just going to try and copy this setup and maybe tweak it a little bit. So this could be our base sort of building block for the menu. Uh, let's do 5 width. And we want kind of an interesting camera angle. So we can just snap the camera over 1 and up 1, rotate 45 degrees. I'm holding command to use the uh, locked grid function. Getting a bit closer here. If you switch between local and global space, you can change how you move objects around. That's pretty useful. Put it about there for the top of the menu. And let's create a light. Somewhere over here. Maybe another one over here. Now we're going to change this cube into being a, a menu item, we'll call it. And then we're going to build a prefab out of it. If you remember, prefabs are basically templates for creating clones of various objects. So we're just going to drag our menu item from our scene over top of the prefab in the project. And now you can see that this turns blue and that means it's linked to this prefab. So if we duplicate this, whoop, Command D to duplicate on Mac, and we can just drag copies of it down and these are still blue because they're still linked to this prefab. So if we change this prefab and hit apply, it'll apply to all the instances of the prefab. So these are menu items, so we need some 3D text. Uh, we just go game object, create other 3D text. And here we have some 3D text with the default font. We're going to go over here in the text properties and change it so the anchor point is middle center and alignment is center. We're going to change character size uh, down somewhat so that it doesn't look so gross. You can import your own fonts and stuff. We're not going to look at that today, though. Okay, let's move this out to the front of this object. You can see that the text renders through everything else, so you have to keep that in mind. So now let's add this to the menu item. We're going to break the prefab connection, that's okay. So now we have text in the menu item and we can apply to all these ones. <clears throat> so here we go. Now we can actually change these so that they say different things. So we can be like, start game. Actually, let's call it new game. And let's do continue. And let's do exit. I'm just going to play around with the camera a little bit here. Okay, so we can run our scene, nothing's going to happen. We just have these things sitting there. Um, right now I'm just going to save my scene. <clears throat> and now to actually get these things doing cool stuff, for example, animating them, 
There's a really, really neat script available for free online called iTween. iTween is basically a way to interpolate an object between different positions. Interpolate means move from point A to point B uh, smoothly. So here's one of the, exa the examples on the iTween website. As you can see, it does smooth movement with a very simple function call. You don't have to worry about keeping track of variables or anything. You just call this one line and it will make it perform this action. And you can do more complicated things with it. Um, screen shakes and stretching things and cycling colors. This library is really, really easy to use and it's also really powerful and that's why it's really really cool um, and it's completely and utterly free so we're just going to go download it we'll save it to our desktop here pop this open so we have an iTunes script that we're going to throw into our unity project which is here And now we have the iTunes script available to us. And we don't need to drag this iTunes script onto anything. It'll just work anyway on its own. And I don't know why it's formatted all weird in here, but whatever. So now we're going to create a menu item script, new JavaScript. Call it menu item. I drag it on here. I'm going to break the prefab and reapply it. Open our script. So basically how we're going to set this up, I'm not going to use the mouse right now, I'm going to use keyboard input. So we're going to pretend that this is like a console game or something like that. So you're going to hit down and up to cycle through the different menu options. So the menu is going to know, let's say, hmm. We'll make a function that gets called when the object is selected or when it's deselected. If it's getting selected, on will be true. If it's not on, so otherwise, we'll do our deselection effect. And we're going to use iTween to do this. So we basically want the objects to pop in and out of the background, kind of like in this guy's video here. So we're going to use the very simple move to function to do this. Just copy and paste code directly from the website. We're only going to change the Z value because Z is the axis that goes in and out of the screen. And let's just check to see what position we want these menu objects to go to. So about there would be nice. So that's about minus one on the z-axis. So we'll enter that here, minus one. Time, we want to be a bit faster, so maybe like 0 0.5 seconds. And the return call will be zero, because that's what we're at right now. We're already at zero. So let's just set up a really basic test here. We're going to go into our start function and we're just going to set up an infinite loop while true true will always be true so this loop will always run we'll call on selected true we'll wait for one second and then we'll call on selected false and then we'll wait another second Let's see if this does anything. Okay, so they all move in and out together every second. So we know that the iTween stuff that we've gotten here is, is working properly. Now we just need to hook up these unselected calls to something more meaningful 